And what did we say? Because what is slope again? Rise over run. Okay, that's one way to think about it. What else is it? So the change in y over the change in x. So what else is it? Nah, he was giving me the equation. I don't really need that. Um, but it's also known as what? For you guys, mostly the most important thing. So how about average rate of change? Okay, and so then we need to make sure we understand units because as far as I know, we're sitting here in pre-calc. So if you think that the quiz is just going to be giving you a bunch of coordinates and you finding the slope, you're crazy, right? I mean, like, that's, I don't even know if that's algebra one, right? That might even be pre-algebra. So now you got to actually know what the slope is telling you, okay? So... When we left the parking lot, was it a straight shot? Like, no, it wasn't a straight shot because the, the, it changed as we went, right? So we left and we were going like, you know, 55, 60. And then we got through, you know, uh, Westville. We had to slow down and then we sped back up. And then maybe we got to a stoplight and it went like this, right, until we got to our destination, yeah? Yeah. So then that is a whole bunch of slopes put together. But the average rate of change was just straight from one point to the other. And that's how we got, I don't remember what we got, like 35 miles an hour or something like that. So that would be the slope of this. So I kind of just gave it away. But what are the units when we do, when we're doing this? What is it? Miles per minute, right? And then we went through and, and uh, changed it up, but that, that's kind of unnecessary. So what does miles per minute, like, tell you? Like, if someone tells you, told you they were going this many miles per minute or hour, you would say you were, like, doing what? Yeah, it's speed. Okay? And so then speed is also known as, if you got speed in a direction, velocity. Is anyone in? Uh, oh, God. Physics right now. You're right, yeah, you guys are doing that right now in physics, yeah? Or very, very quickly you are anyway, right? All right, so then, so then what does slope tell us in this problem? Speed. It tells you speed, okay? So we do got to remember that. Um, so then let's look at, uh, on page 128, let's look at number 30. Now when you guys do when you guys do 29, you don't have to graph this out, but I'm just doing this so that we can kind of see what's going on. Right? Number 30 says the following are the slopes of lines representing daily revenues y in terms of time x in days. So we're still doing time down here on the x axis, and that's often what the problems are going to be asking you. So what is daily revenue? What, is, what does that mean? Daily revenue is what? You okay? Hmm? What's daily revenue? Yeah, they're bringing in in a day, right? Okay, so then, uh, so, and they're talking about one day increases of time. And so then they give you the slope of 400. All right, so then, right, maybe this is day one, day two, and day three. So in the first day, right, you got something like this. And so what is that telling you? Oh, well, okay, so be more specific, though. It was an increase of $400 per that one day. Is that Okay. So the slope here that you're telling us, the line has a slope of M equals 400. So they, their daily revenue increased by $400 on that one day. Is that okay? 
And so then they say the line then has a slope of 100. So it's a little flatter. And so then what does it tell you on that day? Oops. Yeah, 100. So over that day, it increased by 100. Revenue, increased revenue per day. And then they go to the final one of slope is zero. That's supposed to be horizontal. So then what's that telling you? It increased by zero that day. Yeah, so they had no daily revenue increase on that day. Is that okay? All right. So now let's look at 32. Dividends per share. Do we know what dividends are? Share, anyone in econ right now? You guys aren't doing it yet. Yeah, but we're not there. You're not there yet. Do, okay, so do we know what shares are? Shares? What's a share? It's a, it's a piece of a company. It's a stock, basically. Right, and so what are the, why do they, why are there stocks? Yeah, companies need money for what? What do they need money for? Because uh, don't they sell things? So, okay, so, like, yeah, they sell things usually, uh, and then that pays for their day-to-day -day operations and their enroll, uh, employees and things like that. But if they want to do some research and development type things, they need more money to do that with. And so then they make their company public. And so then you and I can buy some of their company and you give them their money so that you give them that money so that they can invest it in some way, research usually. Right? But uh, you do hope for some kind of return off of it. Otherwise, why are you giving them money? Right? If you're not making money, then why, why are you giving them the money? Okay? So something called a dividend is a guaranteed payout. Okay, and a lot of people like that. It's less risky, so that means less return. But dividends are what they pay every quarter or month or whatever it ends, ends up being. Okay, so the graph gives the declared dividend per share of common stock for the Procter & Gamble company for the years 1987 through 1994, like P&G right down uh, in Cincinnati. Uh, they make like everything. Like you, you guys have P and G products in your house right now, guaranteed. What they? Everything, like Johnson and Johnson, like uh, like baby shampoo and stuff. So they make shampoo. Probably, I think they do Head and Shoulders. I think they might be Old Spice, uh, P and G, like all kinds of stuff. Like, like they're a huge, huge company. Um, maybe. But yeah, P and G, you got all you got to do is flip things around and look for P and G on it. Uh, Dove, he said, Dove. Like the soap. Yeah. 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 yeah, so they might. Yeah, so I mean, they make soaps and stuff like that. Tide, I think they're a Tide. Uh, yeah, look it up. Look up what uh, P&G makes and let us know. All right, so it says, use a slope to determine the year when dividends increased most rapidly. So increased is slope. And so you could totally go through each of these coordinates and find the slope for each one and then pick the biggest. But that seems pretty ridiculous because some of them are more obviously increasing faster than others. So give me three years that would make sense to test. What's the year range? Well, it's in the book, number 32. So, so, like you're looking for the steepest slope. So seven to eight is definitely on the list, right? Seven to eight? Three to four. Three to four should definitely be on the list. Any, and then maybe even, yeah, maybe four to five. Four to five looks like it's a little flatter than three to four. But other than that, like you shouldn't even be playing around with slope. You know, I mean, clearly one to two is not, I mean, right, that's almost flat. Does that make sense? Okay, then you do want to do the dividends per share from there. Did you find out any P&G products? What do they got? They got uh, all good, love, pampers, age, aerial, bounce, bounce, cheer, down, drip, drip. Yeah. 
Tide. 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 I knew Tide was one, yeah. So yeah, correct. like so, like walking up and down like the cleaning aisle is like PNG. Ten shoulders. Ten shoulders. I thought. Yeah. Cascade. Cascade. Right. Okay. So like huge company. Right. They make all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You get a job at PNG, you're you're in good shape, no doubt about it. You can probably get all that stuff for free. All right. Yeah. PNG's big company down in Cincinnati. Uh, da, 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 da. So well, I'm moving on here to 35 to 40. It says, find the slope and y-intercept, if possible, of the equation of the line. Sketch a graph of the line. And so then they give us this equation. But if you look on page 124, you see all of these equations of lines. So they have the general form, which is ax plus by plus c equals 0. They have a vertical line, which is x equaling some number, and that's what we talked about at the very beginning. They have a horizontal line, which is y equaling some number. Then they have your favorite slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. What is m? What is b? Y-intercept, okay. And then they have point-slope form. Now, most of these should look familiar, okay? This one, slope-intercept form, is very important because it's in function notation because you're solved for y. Okay, so really a better way that for us to write that would be f of x equals mx plus b. Okay? But the one that you're going to really want to know is this one here. Because x sub 1 and y sub 1 are any point on the line. Right? It's not limited like B is, has to be the y-intercept. X sub 1 and y sub 1 is any point. So if you are asked to come up with an equation of a line, you should almost always start with point-slope form. And then you can manipulate it into these other ones. All right? So... You're going to want to know those, particularly this one. But back to 36, it says find the slope and y-intercept. So then what do I have to do to 36? One more page. We're, still, uh, we're on 129. Because if we could only have it in slope-intercept form, we'd know the slope and the y-intercept. So right now we're in general form or standard form. So I'd like to be in this form. So do you have to get y by itself? So then we're just solving for y. So how do we do that on this one? Um, All right, so what did you say? All right, so he's going to move things away from the y, right? So, yeah, we could just subtract 3y, right? So then we have 2x minus 9 equals 3y, negative 3y. And then divide both sides by negative 3. All right, just make sure you get all of the terms by negative 3. And so then we have negative 2 thirds x plus 3 equals y. So then what's the slope on this one? And then what's the y-intercept? Three. All right, I'm going to do it as a coordinate, though. Zero, three. Is that okay? Yeah. So, right, so if you're writing notes down, then for 35 to 40, you ought to say solve for y, which means you're in slope-intercept form. Is that okay? All right. All right, so 41 to 48 says, find an equation of the line passing through the points and sketch a graph. Oh, I didn't sketch a graph. You guys sketch your own graph. All right, so then we're looking at 42 here. It 
So they want an equation of the line, of the line that goes through these two points. So anytime you're going to come up with a line, you have to get slope. So we might as well start with slope. So how do we find slope? Change in y over the change in x, right? So then what is it? You got to start with the same place. It doesn't matter which point you start with. just got to be consistent. Negative 4. Minus 4. All right. So then that gives us negative 7 over negative 8, yeah. which is 7 eighths. All right. So that's the first thing. Second thing is to pick a point. And plug it into what? Yep, to make one of the two points given and plug into point slope form. So it does not matter which point you pick, but I'm going to pick the one without any negatives. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, so then it's going to be y minus the y value, 3, equals the slope times x minus the x value. Okay. Yeah. Now, if there's no other directions, that's pretty good. <clears throat> like they sometimes they may say put it into point slope form. Sometimes they may say slope intercept form. If we're talking about functions, they mean slope intercept form. However, obnoxiously in the back of the book, they want it in general form. So here's how you deal with that. So that you can see the right uh, see the right stuff. So I'm going to distribute the, the 7 eighths. And then we have y minus 3 equals 7 eighths x minus 7 halves. It's 28 over 8. That reduces the 7 halves. So is that part okay? All right. If you were watching, general form has everything on one side of the equation. So then I'm going to start moving everything to the left. So then it's going to be negative 7 eighths x plus y. And then I'm going to add the 7 halves over. And I believe that gives us um, 1 half. Is that okay? And I'm only doing this so that it matches up in the back of the book for you guys. The other thing is all the coefficients have to be integers. So we're going to multiply through by a value that all denominators go into. So what is a number that 8 and 2 go into? 8. eight. So then we're going to distribute 8, and we get negative 7x plus 8y plus 4 equals 0. Now, when I was taught this stuff, the x value always was supposed to be positive. So then that means you multiply everything by negative 1. I don't know if that's what they want or not. So this might be what they're looking for. Would you like to do another one of those? Yeah. All right, let's do one more. This is part of it. Well, well, this is what it's about. Hmm? All right, so then we're going to do, we'll look at 46. All right, what do we do? What's 
Same thing, same, same question. Find slope. Okay, let's find slope. What do I do? Negative two thirds minus one. I'm going to write like this just because I don't have a calculator on me. So minus one. Okay. So what's in the numerator then? And then five in the denominator. This is your keep change flip. So what does that simplify to be? Um, so one third, one third. Negative one third. Is that okay with everyone? Keep change flip. All right, we got a slope. Now what do we do? What are we trying to do right now? Get the slope point slope form. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to pick one of these points. It doesn't matter which one, but one the one. yeah, the one and one is definitely the better way. So then what is it going to be? Is that okay with everyone? Good job, good job. All right, again... Um, I'm just trying to make this work for the back of the book. I mean, that is the equation that you need. All right, so the back of the book has them all on one side, so what do we do with that? So we get it wrong if we put it like that. It all depends on the directions. If, if you are asked to come up with an equation and you come up with that, then you've basically answered the question. But... In the back of the book, it's not going to look like that. Okay? So on the quiz, if you do that and I don't say put it in, if I say put it in general form, then you got to put it in general form. But if I just say come up with an equation, then this is an equation. Okay? But I'm just trying to make this work so you guys, when you guys look, it'll make sense. So what should we do? What is it? Did you want to get rid of the fraction? Yeah, eventually, but let's let's make sure that before we do that, let's uh, move everything to one side. So you, you want y by itself? No, nah, we're get, we're getting everything on one side on this one. All right, so let's distribute. Okay, so then y minus one equals negative one third x plus one third. So then we're going to add the one third over, so that we got one third x plus y, and then we're going to do negative one minus one third. What's that going to be? Negative four thirds. Is that now already going to multiply by? Okay. So then we're going to get x minus 4. Okay, that's what it's going to have in the back of the book. So to answer his question originally, if they don't tell you, then really this should be fine. Okay? But... They don't tell you, and then they answer them like this, and so I'm just trying to show you what to do. On the quiz, if I say put it in general form, then I want it in this form. But if I don't, then this is, that's an equation. That works. Okay. All right, then you're supposed to graph it. I would graph it from here. Uh, the next section, up to 57, that's all you guys got to do. So it's find an equation of the line that passes through the given point and has the indicated slope. So instead of having to find the slope first, they give it to you. But then you can go straight to point slope. So do we need to do that, or are we okay? We're good, all right. Make sure you guys work on the word problems, because I guarantee there are multiple word problems on this quiz.